I don't care what you say, Bird. There's no way you can improve on the donut. Mm -hmm. Unless, what if I stick pizza in the donut? Well, that would be awesome. <laughs> and I smother it in barbecue. You ought to be a chef. Mm. Or an inventor. Dudes, I got some bad news. Oh. The network's bringing the hammer down. We're gonna have to get insurance this season. You mean? We didn't have insurance last year? Hmm. Get your hands off of me! Get out of there! <laughs> Get up! Uh. Ah, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have to bite the bullet, get insurance, and we're gonna have to get physical. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had enough dudes holding my balls in their hand and making me cough for one year, all right? Eric, it's not gonna be me in the back of a van this time. It'll be a doctor in an office. I don't give a Stevie Solace and welcome to Arbor Live. Tonight, we will present a spiritual array of crystals. Now hold on all you hippie new agers. I'm talking about the hardcore DJ dance duo, the Crystal Method, and the country rocker herself, Crystal Shawanda. We also have the very modern old school hip hop sounds of Let's Go To War. So buckle down, sit up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live.
brother got him. I was on the stage, watching from the side, and so it'd be like, can he go? Then he'd go, and the crowd would go. When you guys go on tour. I hear you have like ro robotic dancers that, that that break out and then wear uh, Gwen Stefani outfits afterwards. Or
lead, okay? Yeah, I will. Just follow me on the camera. Let's go to war, interview. Right on, this is Stevie Solace on the Arbor Live set, hanging out with Peter John from Let's Go to War. What's happening, man? What's happening, bro, you all right? You're a futuristic sort of, you're into some new kind of shit. So I need to get a little more tech on it. Hold on one second, hey, help me out here, hold on. Take this one, give me this. There you go, that's the move. That's Let's the move. make this shit happen for real, dude. This is like some cutting edge. This will pick up all the subtle nuances of your madness. Now we got it going. Okay, so Peter John, <laughs> give me that other motherfucker back. Come here, give me that. I want to know a little bit about how on earth do you hook up with somebody like MIA? That happened actually in the craziest way. Um, MySpace. No. Her, her brother um, heard one of the songs on MySpace and just like really digged it. Hit us up and he was like, uh, are you guys free in February? I was like, okay, sure. Yeah, we're free in February. Why? What's up? You know? And he's like, well, we have some Canadian dates and uh, we'd like you guys to play with us. I thought it was like a joke, right? But then I went on his site and checked it out and went on hers and saw him and I was like, oh, this actually might be real, you know? And then that was it. Just met her at the venue and went across the country with her, man. Just like that, right? Just like that. I don't know if anybody out there knows when you're an opening it's act, tough. there's is, is a, it's some glory in it, but there ain't a lot of bread in it, right? A lot of times you gotta pay your way on. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. didn't have to do that though. No, they took care of us. I mean, I didn't walk away with it buying a car or anything, but I don't know right. if I would do that anyways. Yeah, well, you would if you, Right. If it was like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need to do that. Right, right, I mean, right. who needs a car? Like, check out, okay. Once again, I like this cat, because check out those kicks he's got, right? Oh, yeah. These, you don't need a car with these. You just. Okay, man. And any, any, any like minded guy who comes on my set wearing purple shoes when I'm wearing my purple shoes, I, I got to say hello. Imagine this. I take the stem cells from this donut and inject them into pork rinds. You should be a scientist, dude. Hola, putos! Hola, putos! I've got the results from the physical. Woo! Christmas! Pinche number one. Pinche number two. Yes! Medication is working. My T cells are back. Clean Bella Health. Fit is a fiddle. Eric? Eric! I got a week to live. Come on, you must be exaggerating. Yep, dude, that says business week. You only have five days to live. You do look kind of jaundiced. <laughs> Real quick, we got a little treat for you. Check out my girl, Rebecca Miller.
Great minds think alike. <laughs> Today's theme was purple shoes. Now, a country singer, but very rock and roll, I would say. Put it together myself. You did yeah, not? Yep, I sold all everything on, and my aunt helped me and put this on my jeans and everything, so. Did you know I was wearing purple shoes? No, I did not. Not so, until I got here, so it was a really nice coincidence. Good Indian mind, mind yes. melts. <laughs> I like that. You are not just a small town country singer, even though you come from probably a small town. Yes. You've been living in Nashville lately? Yeah, we, li we lived in Nashville for seven years. Just last year, moved back, but we're, we're from Six Nations. <laughs> You know, because a lot of the Nashville music now sounds like 80s rock with a fiddle, maybe, kind of like. Would you describe it sometimes, as that? Sometimes, sometimes, I think. My roots are traditional country. I sang nothing but Patsy Cline, the Judds, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to keep um, a lot of the traditional in there. But we have a little bit, like, it's a mixture, because that's what I'm about. I, yeah. I love everything. Like, I love everything from Patsy Cline to Guns N' Roses, you know. So there's a huge, you know, difference. It's... For me, it's really nice to listen to because it's not just all one sound, you know, all the way through. You're right. I, I myself, I prefer the traditional country. I'm a Patsy Klein, Loretta Lynn, yeah. and I know that Crystal Shawanda really grew up with the Loretta Lynn. Oh, and, definitely. And so, you, when you started to work with Dwayne and Crystal, did they uh, did they want you to mo move towards modern country, or did they did they help you keep your that, that real traditional country roots thing going? We stayed pretty traditional. But then when I started writing, um, she helped me with one of the songs, which, which I played here today. And um, I Wouldn't Change You was written by us three. And, um, and then we just kind of made it a little bit, little bit more up to date, but still keeping that country sound. Now. now imagine if this donut had sex with chicken fingers and created a baby. Stilbert, man, why don't you scoot over a little bit? Give me some room. Stevie, that cushion is hollowed ground. It's not gonna be the same around here now that Eric's dead. I'm not dead yet, you idiots. <sighs> I guess it hasn't been a week. Look, I'm not gonna need any of this stuff where I'm going. You mean hell? Yeah, come on, Stilbert. No, he's not kidding. I, I did a lot of bad things to people and committed a lot of atrocities against mankind. For you, Bird, I want you to have this 1956 gold top Les Paul. And for you, Steve, I want you to have my T-shirts. I might have used a couple of them as rags, but I'm almost certain I washed them right after. I love you, brother. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. You know, Eric Stilberg doesn't even play guitar. I've been on the cover of Guitar Player magazine. Well, now he has a reason to learn. And maybe he'll be on the front cover of Guitar Player magazine someday. I guess I'll just hawk this and get some more <laughs> rags.
I was burning your photographs. That's a drive to how to take you do when you're living in the aftermath of the love song. I change your locks, all that rock that I waited so long to wait. In a desperate search, find the courage myself of the love we share. Just when I'm in here, here you come like a train out of nowhere. Memory to a railroad track Over my shoulder Turn around, baby, you're mad Make a mistake It's all you were Like a stain from a bad tattoo Oh, shed my skin Start again Oh, but you keep on bleeding That's what you do album coming out? Yeah, album um, just dropped in Canada in the States. It's called Carmageddon. Let's go to war. Carmageddon. Get it. Carmageddon. Carmageddon, yeah. Kind of like a bit of, I was thinking Carmen Ghia, like a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia is kind of, <laughs> you were saying karma. Karma, like, uh, like, goes yes. around, comes around. Got karma. it. I know, you don't have to explain. There's a lot of stuff. A true artist doesn't have to explain his, his madness. I just read that today in a Krishnamaturi book. Really? He's saying that uh, some artists, uh, there's a real artist and then the faux artist, the artist who goes out and uses his art as a way of explaining why he's expressing himself, whereas the real artist just expresses himself. So just come up with your own bullshit and do say what you think. That's uh, right, that's right. Uh, yeah. Feel what you want to feel. Yeah, that's, a, that's the hood way of putting it. I get that. I'm from the hood. I know. Yeah. You played on George Clinton records, man. Yeah, I did that. Hell yeah. I, I did that. Actually, George discovered me. I was very lucky that that way. How's that? Um, because I was homeless and I was sleeping on the couch and George Clinton I met him, and it just so happened that he needed some guitar playing at three o'clock in the morning, and woke me up, and that's how my career started. So, yeah, what? yeah. If you ever, if you, when you see George Clinton when he comes to, you tell me a friend of mine, and, and he'll tell you the same story. That is crazy, man. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But enough about me. Let's yeah, talk. No, I want to talk about Britney Spears. You remix Britney Spears. Tell me no, how that happened. No, we didn't happened. remix it. We wrote and produced it. Oh, don't, don't yeah. tell me about this. Tell me about um, this. Um, writer in L.A. Nicole Morier. Mm -hmm. She had heard the record really liked it and um, apparently Britney heard it and liked it too so uh, they hit us up we sent them some instrumentals they heard it loved it one particular song they started writing a track to it and so what happened was like it's like um, literally back and forth on the internet them sending us what they wrote us tweaking it fixing hey guys try this try this sending it back never met I've never met so we couldn't show it.
so now what is what is it for you now, all next year? What's your big uh, um, Next year, um, the record's coming out, Carmageddon's coming out in uh, Japan, Australia, the UK. Um, with the type of record it is, because it's like so ex experimental and uh, combining so many genres together, um, I'm really excited for it to come out in the UK because I know that you know over there you can they love get music. A, yeah, you can get away with that kind of stuff. So for the next year, uh, just you know playing as much as I can and promotion promoting this record as much as possible. Fantastic, man. Maybe yeah. I'll see you over there. I'm over there all the time. So Maybe I'll, I'll get into the studio with you. And, pff, come on, man. Come hang out with me anytime. We'll, we'll call it. We'll call it Purple Electric Love. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get, then we'll bring Prince and Jimi Hendrix too. Sick. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, we'll say goodbye and get ready to rock. You're gonna take the stage. Are we live? Thank you for having me, Peter John. Let's go to war. Peace. Kaboom.
you know that you and Crystal, when you, when you speak, you both got this little scratchy thing. It's like, <laughs> we keep it real country. It's like both of you guys got that thing. I love that. It's like that little scratchy tone. When you guys talk to each other, is it like you feel like you're talking to yourself? Well, at least, yeah, I'm, well, I've sounded like her when we're talking. I've been mistaken for her. Somebody's come up to me, are you Crystal Shawanda? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. You're like, hell no, <laughs> check this out. I'm Rebecca Miller. <laughs> I really dig most about hanging out with Dwayne and Crystal is, is they have a real passion for giving back to the younger artists. They want to help. I think that uh, that, that that unselfishness is so beautiful. I, I love the fact that she works so hard at that. And yeah. And yeah. I think uh, a lot of a lot of artists are more intimidated by. She could be very well intimidated by somebody like you, who you sound fantastic and you got that crack in your voice. But mm -hmm. you know, instead she welcomes it, and I I, I think that's amazing. Oh, I, so do I. Like, it, it, like, they just said, you know, you got to be out there. And, you know, and once she got her start and got going, and it was just like, I happened to come to Hamilton and, and uh, seen her at the Brad Paisley concert, and she was like, i got to talk to you. She goes, I'm, I'm starting a label, and I want you on it. And yeah. I'm like, get out of here. You yeah. know, like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that, that is an awesome story, and I love to hear two, two women not being intimidated by each other and... and uh, but I also like it when two girls are intimidated and they get into a big old punch out scratch <laughs> fight. But this time we'll have to settle for the good vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember, uh, remember then when next year or so when you're traveling around in your tour bus all over the world and you see the next year, young country singer, perhaps you'll be able to do the same thing and pass yeah. on that good tradition of helping the younger artists out. And oh, I'd love that on my list of things to do as well. Because um, when I look at Crystal, I'm really. Um, I admire her with everything that she's done, her music, her voice, her songwriting, everything. So, I mean, she's a great mentor to have, so. Well, I admire you, Rebecca Miller. Oh, I think thank you very much. Any woman that shows up on my set wearing purple shoes is <laughs> rocking. <laughs>
can't do this, Eric. What you're asking me to do is sacrilegious. I'm not going to mutilate my invention of a donitsa by barbecuing it. You have to. It's on my bucket list. <sighs> Eric, we gotta talk about this bucket list, man. I don't think this stuff's gonna happen. It's ridiculous. Every other thing on here is you having sex with someone you're not gonna have sex with. Bird, if there's one thing I've learned looking death in the face, you gotta have hope. Run the Boston Marathon, come on. You wanna have a three-way with Carrie Underwood and the chick from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. You know what? Fine. The least you two ass could do is give a dying man his last wish and barbecue this f***ing donitsa. Please! Okay. Okay. You know what I can do for you? Hook you up with a hot air balloon ride. That's not on my bucket list. Well, it is on mine. See? My bucket list. Hot air balloon with Eric. Film with Stevie. Fine. We could do this film with you. You in a hot air balloon? When I met you, we were, it was a long time ago, we were quite a bit skinnier, both of us, and we were quite a bit younger. <laughs> You're just as handsome, but for me, I was better than I, I was. I was actually a lot fatter. I was actually 300 pounds, but thanks to, to <laughs> years of hard work. See, if I start out talking to you, I was like 300 pounds. You go, oh my god, it looks so good. It looks fantastic. <laughs> like electronic bands that has a platinum record in America. What did you do that was so different? How did you figure this out? Well, you got a tour, you got every band, you know, that's a, you know, it's a recipe for, you know, breaking up in any genre. You gotta get out there and play for people because radio stations aren't just gonna play your stuff for, for no reason. And also where we play, we, cause we didn't play just major city. We played like everywhere we possibly could all over the States, you know, like, so a lot of times those would be our best shows when we'd go into like, Boise on a Tuesday night or something, and they just hadn't seen a show like ours ever before, you know? I remember being in Milwaukee, it was like 97, and 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 I was just like, you know, this at the show, and people were like, and then people You guys were, are definitely, I told you guys, <laughs> rock, you guys bring this aggressive to it. But I was like, I did I just throw the devil, did I just throw some horns out there? And they were like, yeah, and they are like, yeah, I think the kids were really digging it. So I started seeing these like ravers with the big pants and the, <laughs> the, the, the stuff hanging out of their mouths, and like doing the, the horn. I was like, okay, well, it's, it's cool. Let me just work with a, a girl who I think is super fantastic, and a lot of people around the world don't know her. And, uh, Emily, I think it's Emily Haynes is her name, right? Yeah. The girl from Metric. I think Metric is like the most underrated, super cool band. How was it working with her? She was getting on an airplane, and she and just randomly, with the song, one of the songs that we that we sent to her popped up, and she was like, "Oh wow, what is this?" And she just, you know, started getting ideas, and and then she's like, "I I got all these ideas. They're just rushing out. I'm gonna re try to record them, and I'll get back to you." And so, a couple days later, a week or so, she sent us something, and it was sounded amazing. It's a really great uh, reverb on it. I mean, just. I mean, I mean, sure, there were some weaknesses somewhere, you know, in the in the level, the recordings levels, and some of the quality. Of it, but we were, wow, did, where did you? What reverb did you? You know, what? She goes, oh, I just, I, I just sang it into GarageBand in my in my apartment. My apartment has really great reverb. Wow. And I'm like, we're like, wait a second, your voice is just, I mean, and and yeah, her voice is fantastic. You, she can just the quality of her voice is just that cuts through every, any any music that you put under her, and then she has this thing where you just fall in love with her on every you know with every syllable. It's just, she has this yeah. quality where you just you you can't help but listen to whatever style, whatever whatever song. It, she's it's in. called being a real artist. Yes, because yes. <laughs> there's just so few of them left. Now yes. you find yourself so incredibly surprised when actually somebody's yes. really good. No, yeah, this no. is bizarre. But she's, she's, really, she's actually really good. Yeah, she's yeah. Great. It's like because most people suck now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Crystal Method on Arbor Live. Oh, gotta get the one. Cheers. <laughs> Tony Berg would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I stick a wiener right through the center here, I'll have a donut dog. I am so over the donut technology. I don't even like donuts. You know who liked donuts? 
Eric like donuts. Guys, guys! You're alive! I got great news. Eric, you only have a day to live. Shouldn't you be out apologizing to all the people you wronged? This retard gave me the wrong envelope. Huh? It's security Frank who's got a day to live, not me! Hey, <laughs> all right! High five! Welcome yeah. back! Welcome back! Great. So I guess you'll uh, be wanting your guitar back, huh? Nah, keep it. But I will need those rags back. But I already used them all. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Hey, you think we had to tell security Frank the bad news? Come on, man. He's got a day to live. Why bum him out? Yeah. Hey, Frank. Got any old rags lying around? Uh, it's useless.